Now, welcome to the Bloodborne uh, addendum video. Now, th there were some people who were dissatisfied with the original Iceberg, and after rewatching it myself, yeah, there were a couple of things that I needed to clarify on a bit more, especially like the Labyrinth Mall. I barely talked about that thing. So, yeah, th there were. This won't be a super long video since uh, I think people were majority, you know, satisfied with most of the entries, but I will go over some other things and some different interpretations on some of the entries. So let's get into it. Now for make contact, I have to thank my boy uh, Lagmeister for this one. He said that the things the reasoning behind the make contact gesture is that it's basically a uh, demonstration of advanced intelligence that we understand Pythagoras and mathematics, which makes a lot of sense. Um, my personal interpretation that it was like the hands of a clock, which someone, uh, Eric Tilgren, added on saying that this could be a reference to the astral clock tower, which also makes a lot of sense. So I think, you know, I don't know if there's if that's like solid definitive proof, but I think they're both pretty good theories, uh, in my opinion. Also, Pablo Escobar came back from the dead just to say that I was lying about the statue disappearing. Now, for the time being, I don't actually have proof of this, um, but I swear in my last playthrough, my, my partner was with me, she can attest, you know, she can, she's my witness. Um, uh, I remember telling her, oh, the statue isn't there anymore, and I'm pretty sure I was in the same spot. But uh, I should be getting up to that point in my playthrough on YouTube soon enough, so when I do get up to that point, I'm going to film it, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm right, you know, I'm right. So, moving on. Now, with the Beast Claws, I gave a pretty rudimentary explanation as to what the, you know, the moveset of the weapon is and whatnot. But there's a lot more to it. Um, much like the Cos Parasite with, with Milkweed, um, the Beast Claws are greatly enhanced if you use the Beast's Embrace rune. Um, the moveset becomes a lot more aggressive, you know, there's like leaps and it's very fast and menacing looking, honestly. It's a very scary weapon, you know, it's, there's lots of screaming and it's just very, it's a very interesting weapon, honestly. Um, the weapon itself is pretty basic on its own, but with the rune, whoo, there's some good shit going on there. Um... I guess I never really uh, talked much about it in my video because I've never used it. I've never honestly used it my, for myself. So maybe in my next playthrough, I'll I'll use it and then I can give uh, a better opinion on it. Now with the Cleric Beast shortcut, um, someone had mentioned that it was taken out of the game because it just it put too much performance stress on the game, which makes lots of sense. Um, I... I didn't, uh, like, in, just in terms of in-game sort of geography, the shortcut didn't make much sense to me because, like, there's not much point of going back to the Great Bridge after you've killed the Cleric Beast. Um, there's no, like, unless you're farming blood vials, of course, from the werewolves, because, you know, they drop quite a few blood vials early on, but that's a probably, it's a better technical explanation, and I'd say it makes sense. Now, 60 Insight, um... Like, it is true that if you have 60 Insight, you will hear the baby crying no matter what. And uh, I mentioned in my video, I, I did a re recent playthrough, and I heard the baby crying at 50 Insight. But uh, I think at the time, I did trigger the Blood Moon, and when you when you trigger the Blood Moon, you can hear the baby crying from no matter what, no, no matter where location. So, unless it's in Hunter's Dream, but... Pretty much in any location, you can hear the baby crying after the blood moon is triggered. So that was just confused, confusion on my part. Now with Queen Yarnum, uh, pretty much everything I said was correct with Queen Yarnum. Other than the use of the Yarnum Stone, I said that the Yarnum Stone, uh, there was no use for it. But th that is not true. Um, having the Yarnum Stone enables uh, an item to be purchased from the store, which is uh, Ritual Blood 4. And, I mean, honestly, it, it, that still isn't all that much, so it may as well do nothing. Now, the Slug Farm. I'll be honest, I didn't really know much about this one going in, but some people have pointed out that the the slugs are actually, like, phantasms or cause parasites, which makes sense since, you know, the empty phantasm shell is basically, a, like, a slug that you rub onto your weapon to slaver it in magic damage or, you know, a magic sort of coating. And, you know, there are those, like, 
slug things dropping from the sky, which I guess are cos parasites, those humanoid slug creatures that look very similar to the orphan. So, yeah, I, that I, I'll buy that. <laughs> Now, a user claimed that I did Lance McDonald quite dirty, and honestly, I, I agree. I didn't say much about Lance McDonald. I kind of said he was, oh, he was the guy who made the 60 FPS Bloodborne patch, but he does so much more than that. Um, he has his own YouTube channel, obviously, and he talks about unused cut content from Soulsborne games. He has lots of interesting videos that you should all watch right now, um, after this one, obviously. But um, yeah, if you want to know more about you know unreleased content, then he's your man. Now, I'll be honest, I feel quite stupid for this one. A lot of people pointed out that Pale Blood is the Moon Presence, which makes sense judging from, you know, the beginning of the game, you get a note saying, you know, seek Pale Blood, transcend the hunt. And um, it makes sense that the, you know, the hardest ending to obtain, the one where you go after the Moon Presence, you know, that's what you were going for all along. So he, that that is the Pale Blood. And, you know, when you beat the Moon Presence, you become a... Uh, a slug you know a great one and that is transcending so just thinking about that you know i feel really dumb so forgive me for forgive me for that you know mistake and uh yeah i'm now in the know <laughs> now with the uh o flora of the moon line i have to plead ignorance on this one because there were many users commenting that they had recently heard this line in their game and um, in my like five years of playing Bloodborne, I have never heard this line once. Um, so I was going by my own knowledge of the game that, you know, uh, I played Bloodborne, you know, quite a bit after release, probably about a year or so. Um, and uh, I never heard the doll say this line. So it's obviously still in the game. There are obviously people who are still hearing it to this day. Um, apparently there are some things that can sort of stop the line from occurring, stop the doll from saying it, such as, uh, getting a certain ending or activating the old Hunter's DLC, which is probably why I've never heard it, but it's still in the game. So disregard that entry. Now the Labyrinth Mole, I, I barely cover this guy in the iceberg and honestly, there isn't much else to more to it. Um... He's found in a select few chalice dungeons. Uh, he's very slow, has like a spitting attack that's super easy to avoid. Um, I guess the only the hu humorous thing about him is that he can change like the ends of his body, like where his head should be. So he can put his head on his butt, his butt on his head, etc, etc. Um, also has a grab attack that causes frenzy, which I, I guess you would kind of go mad if you were swallowed by a big gluttonous worm thing and shat out one end so yeah um i will put some glyphs uh on the on the video if you want to see him with your own eyes but other than that the only significant thing about him is how rare he is now the shadows of yarnum uh i still feel like that my uh theory about them is correct but there were some people saying that these guards aren't for Murgo, but are for Yarnum, which makes sense since, you know, Yarnum is in their name. So it would make sense for Yarnum to have bodyguards because, you know, she's the queen. She needs to be protected. And um, I still think they also guard Murgo since she is also like, or he, is Murgo a he or she? I think it's a he. Um, is, you know, a, a part of her. So it would make sense that, you know, the Shadows of Yarnum are also guarding her, but... You know, they're, they're found in great quantity before the Murgo boss fight, which, which is what led me to my original theory that that they're Murgo's bodyguards. But, um, you know, Yarnum is also found right before the Murgo boss fight, which, you know, lends more to the, to the you know, the Yarnum bodyguard theory. So uh, I, think, I think they're both correct, honestly. Um, so thank you for pointing that out to me. And that honestly makes a lot more sense. Now for the Dark Beast, Pal and Archibald entry, uh, some users pointed out that uh, Pal probably just ate Archibald, which makes quite a bit of sense actually, since you know it would explain why he has the Spark Hunter badge. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic explanation, but it works really well. I mean, it, it does mention in the description for the Spark Hunter badge that um, uh, Archibald did like to work very closely with uh, Lauren Dark Beasts to uh, reproduce the electric effect. So maybe he got too close one day and got gobbled up by one. Uh, it makes lots of sense to me. Now, for this one, I have to give my boy Franku a shout out in the comments. Um, with the German and the Orphan crying entry. Uh, th th apparently there are similarities between them. Um, they both sort of look alike. Um, and there's more than that. Um, he thinks that the link is 100% intentional. Along with this, German and Orphan share the same exact death animation, which I've never noticed. I'll put a video of it, you know, a comparison of it in the, in the iceberg addendum. And they have other similar reused audios. Which also, I, I've never noticed myself, but I can sort of believe it. Um, and it says, in addition, when you kill the orphan, the doll says that German feels relieved in some way. So perhaps, uh, you know, the orphan of Koz is like a, you know, a, I don't know, an avatar of German in some fashion. You know, maybe that's him, his, like, form stuck in the nightmare. But, um, again, uh, I might be talking out of my butt here, but that's the gist of what I'm getting here. Um... He, you know, Franku suggests that he may have, you know, ascended to a, you know, status of a great one and took the form of the Orphan of Koz. So, there are definitely links. I'm not sure if there are definitive connections, but I there's definitely some, some stuff going on here. Now, I have to give this one to the coolest guy ever, 69, uh, possibly the best YouTube username I've ever heard, uh, for clarifying what the, the Lawrence is your friend, mission to find him entry was supposed to be about. Uh, it was supposedly the original plotline for Bloodborne. Uh, the idea was that you and Lawrence go to Yarnum for the blood to cure some undisclosed illness, which causes your character to pass out for three weeks, at which point they wake up in some mansion or something, and someone, presumably German, tells you that Lawrence left a few weeks ago, so you got to find him. He doesn't remember where he read it, but he remembers that. So, And, and I think someone else also mentioned a similar plotline to this. So obviously there is some merit behind this. Uh, I don't know where this theory is from. I don't know if you know, someone's done a video on it, but, uh, I'd say this suitably explains the entry very well, so, case closed. Now, this one has to do with the Lake of Mud, um, the Lake of Mud, it was actually used for a, another version of the Moon Presence boss fight, um, this was the arena for the original Moon Presence that was probably in the alpha or beta phase of Bloodborne, uh, and about the new, the uh, old mood presence, my bad, was that um, it looks a lot different to the current one. Uh, it's a lot more malformed. It looks, it's got a lot more tentacles on it. It's a lot more slivery appendages. Um, it's not completely different. Um, it, I'd say it's a lot more sort of blobby and just weird looking compared to the current one. But it's interesting nonetheless. Um, so yeah, th that's more on the Lake of Mud. Now this one I also kind of feel stupid for. Basically everyone and their mother told me that the, the Canehurst Noble that the entry was referring to was Lady Maria, which is ob super obvious looking back on it now. Um, I, I think the entry sort of threw me off a bit, the, the wording of it. Like the doll was based on a Canehurst Noble. So naturally, I looked at, you know, the enemies you find in Canehurst, the noble dress, you know, the, the Canehurst portraits. I looked back on them and I was like, hmm, like, what what the hell is this about? But yes, Lady Maria was a, a knight of Canehurst, and she uh, that obviously makes her a Canehurst noble. So yes, the, the doll is very much based on Lady Maria, a Canehurst noble. Now, while there's nothing new uh, from Berserk that I wish to share on this video, I'd like to take this opportunity to pay my respects to Kentaro Miura, or Mayura, sorry if I pronounce his name wrong, um, who recently passed away. I think it was last week. So he, he died at the, the pretty young age of 54, and the, the internet has been in mourning ever since. Um, I, I'm quite shocked by the by his passing, and... It's a great blow to the Souls community since, you know, a lot of people would have gotten into Berserk due to Dark Souls and Bloodborne. So yeah, just pay my respects to, to, to the man who inspired such a great series of games. 
R.I.P. Now with the old Yarnum statue thing, um, a commenter, Z-Pain number 14, said that apparently there's a floating statue in the sky that is just there for some reason. It's sort of similar to the floating door in the Duke's archives in Dark Souls. So I don't know why it's there. I don't know if it was for like debugging purposes or something, but it's it's there. So yeah, there's a little fun fact for you. Now, I'm not sure where to put this one. I'm not sure whether to put it in the Yarnum doesn't make sense geographically or the Kanehurst cut content, but I guess I'll slap it onto both. But Mattia Tarantino says that the whole map of the Waking World doesn't exactly make sense now because they were indecisive of how to put together the areas they had. So, specifically, there is a huge untextured and undetailed map file in the game which looks like it could have been the back of the Grand Cathedral. Evidence of this is that the chains for the altar in the Grand Cathedral to be an elevator are present in the Waking World too, meaning you could have reached upper areas of the cathedral from there. Thus the research hall is located inside the tower above the Grand Cathedral. Um, anyway, they had ideas for some kind of area to be above and behind the Grand Cathedral, as evidenced by the fact that every time you see Yarnum and the clock towers from far away during the game, there is always some sort of building clusterfuck behind the towers. Also, there's geometry for stairs going up instead of an elevator that leads to Ebritus. Back to the untextured map piece of before, it has some striking similarities to Kanehurst. For example, a sort of broken bridge and even what looks like an area above the main entrance of a huge building, basically identical looking to one in Kanehurst. Um, so basically, what this says to me is that they were planning to make Kanehurst like an area or like a, a district in Yarnum instead of its own separate sort of castle, but... Uh, I'm not sure if this is definitive proof, but yeah, there, there's obviously some cut content here and, you know, a big amount of it. So, you know, big ups to Mattia Tarantino for letting me know about this. I think that'll just about do it. I, I think I, I've explained the ones that people were mostly complaining about, um, offering different theories and whatnot. Um, there are still some ones that are, I would love to know about, such as the Graves and the Witches Abode. I've never, I still have no idea what the hell that one's about. So if anyone has any info on that, please let me know. And I might make a, you know, a separate little video about it or just add it on to something else. I, I really don't feel like making a second addendum video, but I will if I have to. Um, I want to make this iceberg, to, you know, as the, the most comprehensive sort of iceberg on YouTube. And, uh... I honestly should have just put more work into the first one, but, you know, it was my first Iceberg video, my first big editing job, so I feel like I did pretty well, but, yeah. Um, so thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support. I think the original Iceberg video is nearly up to 40k views, which I'm absolutely stoked about. So thank you guys for all that, and, uh, you know, check out the Bloodborne playthrough uh, that I'm currently in. Um having lots of fun playing this for YouTube, so check that out. And yeah, thank you for your viewership, and what can I say, I love you guys. <laughs> so yeah, have a great one, and you know, enjoy your week.